What's up my peeps, it is now time for the Smackdown, or Smackdown Live, I'll, I'll just call it Smackdown, I have a feeling like they're just calling it Smackdown Live, just to aware of the casual fan or, you know, the new fans watching that, hey, Smackdown is live now, so hopefully they take that part out soon. Anyways, yeah, Smackdown Review, I'll go over the results of the show as usual, some of the highlights of my opinion, and then give you guys my thoughts and my review at the end of it. So, uh, it kicks off with Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan coming out, and uh, they've got pretty much the SmackDown roster, the entire SmackDown roster around the ring. And they go ahead and bring out the WWE Champion, and then Dean Ambrose, he says he's ready for a new challenger, and they go ahead and announce that tonight on SmackDown, they're going to have a six-pack challenge, six superstars competing uh, to determine the new number one contender for Dean Ambrose Championship at SummerSlam. So they start going ahead and naming the competitors in the match. They go ahead and say John Cena, Bray Wyatt, AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler. And then Daniel Bryan goes ahead and says that for the sixth competitor, they're going to go ahead and have a battle royal right now with all the SmackDown superstars here. And the winner of that battle royal will move on to the six pack challenge and become that sixth person. So anyways, they have the battle royal and uh, what I really liked about this is Kane was really dominant. The Kane in this battle royal was pretty much like the Kane that broke the Royal Rumble record. He pretty much eliminated everybody in this match and I love that. I'm a fan of Kane. I, it's just the way they've been using him. It's It's been hard to really have any interest in Kane or really look forward to him in matches because it's it seems like you always know the result. He's gonna lose the match. He's It's gonna be a DQ, no contest. Very rarely does he win significant matches anymore, and that's not something that just started recently, that's been going on for years now. Whenever John Cena and Kane face off, Cena always wins, and you know it when you when you see the match being booked, when you see the match being announced. Kane just kept on losing, he used to be that guy that, well he still is, <laughs> the guy that gets the title match but always loses. He's, he's there to, you know, put over the other superstars. Um, but anyways, yeah, look, getting back on topic. It was real dominant. The final three were Apollo Crews, Kane, and Zack Ryder. So Zack Ryder, you know, ended up in the final three. He actually went ahead, hit the Broski boot on both Crews and uh, Kane, and then he goes for the Rough Rider, but Kane catches him in the choke slap position, or pretty much grabs him by the throat, and then he throws Zack Ryder outside the ring, and then he tries to go for the same thing on Crews, but Crews backflips out. Of the choke slam, and then Kane charges Cruz. Cruz just pulls down the ropes. Kane falls out the ring, and Apollo Cruz is the sixth member or sixth superstar that's gonna be in the main event to crown a new number one contender. So that was pretty cool. And then we get Becky Lynch versus Natalia rematch from Battleground. I'll just go over some of the big moments of the match. Yeah, Becky hitting a top rope leg drop on Natalia for a two count, and then you had finisher attempts. Uh, you had Becky Lynch going for like a roll up into this armor, but Natalia squeezed out of it. And then Natalia tries to go for the sharpshooter, but she can't get it. And then she goes ahead and said, hits her with the natty by nature, pretty much a discus clothesline for a two count. And then she goes for the sharpshooter once again, but Becky Lynch counters it into the disarmor, and Natalia taps out, so Becky Lynch wins the rematch. After the match, Renee comes in wanting to get some words from Becky. She asks her how it feels to get redemption, and then Becky's like, oh, you can call me Becky Balboa. And then Alexa Bliss's theme song hits. She comes out, and she says that, hey, Becky, you might have been the first woman drafted to the brand, but you're looking at the personification of what the new women's division looks like. And then Naomi's theme song hits, and I'm expecting a new look because she was hyping up a new look, but I guess that was her ring gear, and here she didn't come out in ring gear. So anyway, she comes out, and uh, she pretty much tells Alexa Bliss that, hey, you haven't even been in the ring yet, or this ring yet, uh, so go ahead, get, get back, or get in the back of the line, and then Carmella comes out, and she does her intro, and says that Tuesdays are about to get fabulous, and then Eva Marie comes out, and her entrance has like this long ass intro, I like hyping her up, putting her, putting her over, calling her charismatic, the most beautiful thing ever, this and that. It's a long intro of just praising Eva Marie. Kind of thought it was funny, 
And uh, she just comes out. She doesn't say anything. Instead, she takes off her Ric Flair robe. And uh, that's pretty much it. Afterwards, we get uh, a promo for Baron Corbin saying that unlike the other competitors in this match, he's not winning this match for mom and dad or anybody else, but the only person that counts himself. And we have promos like this from all the superstars in the six pack challenge. And then we get Ms. TV. His guest is Randy. Initially, he just pretends like he's Randy and he, you know, goes ahead and puts himself over. And then Randy actually comes out. This time, no pants. Because seeing Randy in pants at Battleground was something we don't often see. This time, he's, you know, wearing the usual, the shirt with the trunks. And he goes ahead, tells The Miz that clearly you're an expert at playing with yourself. You know, referring to The Miz going ahead and talking to himself, pretending like he's Randy. And uh, then The Miz pretty much asks him the same question that Y2J asked him. Why did you choose to fight a legend such as Brock Lesnar? And then Randy tells him, uh, if you remember, I used to make a pretty good living killing legends around here. Referring to his legend killer gimmick. And uh, then he says, he brings up what he said at Battleground. It only takes one RKO to send Brock Lesnar's ass straight to Viperville. And then he says, but you know what? SummerSlam doesn't need to be his first match. Actually, he'd like his first match to be right here in Buffalo right now against The Miz. And he even tells The Miz, hey, I don't even need uh, the championship to be on the line. And of course, The Miz goes ahead and says no. And then Randy goes ahead and uh, says, oh, are you scared of getting beat up in front of your wife? And uh, he questions, you know, who does the pitching and who does the catching in the relationship. And then Marie's goes ahead and says, what, you know, how dare you, and then she goes ahead and accepts the match for The Miz. And then we get Randy versus The Miz after a commercial break, and uh, Randy looks uh, very pale, looks like he lost some muscle, but anyways, yeah, like, what's the thing, a, a lot of these superstars, once they come back, they come back super pale. But anyways, um, it was a pretty quick match, uh, Randy threw, or not Randy, The Miz threw Randy actually outside the ring on his shoulder. And then for a second, I thought maybe Randy hurt his shoulder again because he held it. And then it seemed like he said fuck because they censored it. Uh, so I thought it was legend there. And then The Miz focused on it the entire match for the duration of the match, which was really short. And then he throws Randy shoulder first into the steps. He puts him back in the ring. And then he goes in the ring himself. And then bam, Marco out of nowhere. And then Randy waits for a while, and he just taunts once again for another RKO, and he hits a second one, goes for, for the cover this time, and gets the three count and the win. After that, we see some jobber in the ring, and Heath Slater comes in, he goes ahead, punches him, takes him out the ring, and then he says that there must be a mistake, how can he not be drafted to either SmackDown or Raw, and then he proposes that they make the vein event a 7-pack challenge and add him in, and then he starts a sign Heath Slater chant. Shane McMahon comes out, and he says if you're looking for a job, there's a better way to go about it, like sign a resume. And then Heath Slater goes ahead and says, I'm pretty sure you have the WWE Network, so go ahead, type in my name, it'll show you my resume, and it'll show Heath Slater the brains behind the Nexus, the core, 3MB, social outcast, and that he's a three-time tag team champion, and he can do much more if they just give him a chance and sign him on SmackDown, and... Then he goes ahead and says that he's the hottest free agent, and then we see Rhino come out from under the ring, and then he's behind, he gets in the ring, he's behind Heath Slater, Heath Slater doesn't see him, Shane McMahon sees him, and he says, hey, you know what, I agree, I'm looking at the hottest free agent right now, and then Heath Slater's like all hyped up, he thinks he's talking about him, he turns around and Rhino gores him. And uh, then his music hits, and uh, that's it, man. I'm a, I'm a fan of Rhino, love the gore. Uh, but the guy has like one of the weirdest body shapes ever. He looks like a fridge with limbs and a head. It's a weird... Anyways, yeah. Rhino gores him and that's about it. So, afterwards, uh, we get also the pre-match promo from AJ Styles. Saying that he'll beat up everybody in the match and beat up John Cena like he always does. And then Bray saying that change is inevitable and that tonight five men will fall. So... We get the main event, Bray Wyatt versus Apollo Crews versus Barrett Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler versus AJ Styles versus John Cena. And right away, they cut to commercial break. Once they come back, we see AJ Styles and Bray Wyatt double teaming Apollo Crews. 
and they try and outdo each other. Wyatt goes ahead and tells AJ, watch this. And he bounces off the ropes, hits the running senton on Cruz. And then he goes ahead and tells AJ, hey, show me something. So AJ goes ahead, bounces off the ropes. And before he goes for something, Bray Wyatt hits him with a clothesline. And then a few moments later, AJ Styles hits a springboard 450 splash on Bray Wyatt, but John Cena breaks the count. Then we see a fireman's carry neckbreaker by AJ Styles on John Cena, and then Cruz comes in and hits triple German suplexes on AJ, and on the last one, AJ Styles backflips uh, to sell that last German. And then we get an STO by Baron Corbin to Cruz for a two count. Baron Corbin goes ahead, complains to the referee. And then we see the spot where superstars do the whole powerbomb into a superplex thing. They did it on both sides of the ring at the same time, where on one side you had uh, Cruz, Bray, AJ, and the other side had Corbin, Ziggler, and Cena. Uh, Cruz did the powerbomb, and on the other side, Corbin did the powerbomb. And then Corbin went ahead and hit the uh, Deep Six, his signature move on Cruz, but Cruz kicked out. And then Cruz hit his finisher, actually, the uh, powerbomb, sit-down powerbomb, on Corbin, but Bray Wyatt pulled the referee out the ring at this point. They pointed out that, hey, this six-pack challenge doesn't have any disqualifications. And then we get the uh, spider walk from Bray, which freaks out Cruz, and then Bray Wyatt hits, hits Sister Abigail on Apollo. And then Dolph Ziggler comes in, hits the zigzag on Bray, goes for the cover, but of course the referee is out because Bray pulled him out and the referee's like holding his knee on the outside. And then Dolph starts tuning up the band and he goes for the super kick, but John Cena comes in out of nowhere with the attitude adjustment on Dolph. And then Bray tries to go for Sister Abigail on John Cena, but John Cena pushes him into AJ Styles, who hits a Pele on Bray. And then Cena hits an attitude adjustment on AJ, goes for the cover, AJ kicks out. At that point, I thought Cena might have gotten it, but yeah, AJ kicked out. And then Cruz up top with a cross body, but John Cena catches him. He rolls backwards, puts him on his shoulders, and hits the attitude adjustment. Bray also comes in for an attitude adjustment too from Cena. And then Cena tries to lift up Baron Corbin for it as well, but Baron Corbin gets out of it, but John Cena eventually gets back him, uh, gets him back on his shoulders and actually hits the AA. And then he turns around, phenomenal forearm by AJ Styles. And then Dolph goes ahead and super kicks AJ, goes for the cover and gets the win. By the way, AJ sold that super kick really nicely. So yeah, Dolph Ziggler won the number one contendership match. I thought Bray was going to win it. So this was unexpected, so it's going to be Dolph Ziggler versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship and Seth versus Finn for the Universal Championship, which I still think is a, like I don't like the name Universal Championship, I really wanted them to just bring back the World Heavyweight Championship, and I thought they would do that because they took out the World Heavyweight from the WWE Championship, but also something to note here on SmackDown is it referring to Dean Ambrose title as the WWE World Heavyweight Championship once again. So I feel like they wanted to do that or were going to go that direction and bring back the World Heavyweight Championship because they took that out of the WWE Championship name. But now they, it seems like they brought it back or put it back there and now it's back to being the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So I guess they changed their mind and instead went with the WWE Universal Championship as the Raw title. So... What did I think of the show? Did I think SmackDown beat Raw? Uh, well, first off, I thought it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Like I said, really enjoyed the Battle Royal where Kane actually looked dominant. Apollo Crews winning it. I'm all for that. I'm a fan of Crews, uh, so him winning the Battle Royal was pretty cool. And also, main event was the best match of the night. Now, I was hoping that we get like a big title change or a, a big moment on SmackDown outside of just finding out the number one contender and I was thinking maybe they'd go with Randy beating The Miz for the title but that match wasn't for the championship so I didn't really get that big moment apart from the number one contendership or number one contender being announced but overall I thought it was a good show um, compared to Raw though Raw definitely wins this week Raw had it was gonna be hard to top Raw and Although SmackDown put on a good show, I can't say they top Raw, at least not for me. And part of it, I think, might have to do with 
the mid card. Like, SmackDown has a strong main event right now, but their mid card isn't that isn't as vast as Raw's mid card, and you don't have the guys like Kevin Owens, Cesaro, uh, Sami Zayn in there, uh, which is one of the reasons why it would have been great to have uh, some of those guys uh, on SmackDown. But also, speaking of the mid card, they showed a promo video saying that Shelton Benjamin is coming to SmackDown. I think that's freaking great, and. I feel like him returning to SmackDown rather than Raw is the right decision because once again the mid card on SmackDown isn't as good I feel as the Raw's mid card. Now when it comes to uh, tonight's main event, how did I feel about it? There was a lot of commercial breaks during the match, a lot, but despite that I enjoyed the match and I see that they're going for surprise wins this week i mean first finn balor and then dolph ziggler and also they're wasting no time pushing some of the guys like pushing some of the guys straight to the main event scene because they need to do that now that they've got this brand split they need to go ahead and build up a bunch of stars so that you don't just have a rotation of two three main event guys in the title picture all the damn time on both raw and SmackDown, and especially now that they're gonna get their exclusive pay-per-views and all that, they really need to do that, and it's, it's cool to see that they really wasted no time to do so. Now, I know Dolph Ziggler has been in the title scene in the past, but that was the past. Since then, he hasn't been winning too many matches, and it, it just looked like he wasn't gonna get back in that title scene for a very, very long time, if ever. Uh, but now, looks like this brand split, him going to SmackDown, has done him really well. And, uh, seems like they're gonna start building Dolph Ziggler back up. And now, it seems like he'll be doing the super kick as a finisher or a second finisher. I mean, he just took out AJ in this match with the super kick. A guy that kicked out of the attitude adjustment. Think about that. AJ kicked out of the attitude adjustment, but he didn't kick out of Dolph's super kick. But then again, when you really think about it, he just took an attitude adjustment, so that's the second finisher that he took. So never mind, forget what I said. But um, yeah, looks like he's using the super kick now as the second finisher. The only problem with that is the Usos on the same show go ahead and use the super kick every two seconds. Like their their move set is 90% super kicks, and they don't get win. Well, actually, they, did they get wins off of that? I think they've gotten like one or two wins off of some super kicks. But most of the time, it's to set up the splash. Now, when it comes to Randy versus The Miz, um, honestly, if I were to rate this match, it'd be a pretty bad rating, because the thing is, it seemed more like a reminder that, hey, Randy can pull off the RKO out of nowhere, more so than an actual competitive match. It was basically just The Miz. You know what, I will say this, though. For a really quick match, because usually quick matches where the guy wins, they usually end up being a squash match. In this case right here, it wasn't really, because The Miz dominated most of the match, all, I don't know, one minute and a half of it, and then Randy hits two RKOs, and that's it. But apart from those RKOs, all the offense really came from The Miz. Um, but yeah, seemed more like a reminder that the RKO can come out of nowhere, so that can happen at SummerSlam when he faces off against Brock. Then when it comes to the women's match, I'm not interested in the Becky Lynch versus Natalya feud. So once again, it's hard for me to get entertained by that. I mean, when I'm not interested in the feud, it's hard to get even into the match. Uh, but happy to see Becky got a win there uh, to counteract the loss that she got at Battleground as far as the post-match segment. Um, See, I feel SmackDown has a weaker Divas division than Raw. Once I saw the Divas in there, I was like, okay, maybe it's not that bad. But then once I thought about it again, I was like, yeah, it is kind of bad. Because they've got Eva Marie, who's pretty bad on the mic. Some pretty bad acting when she's on the mic. Kind of like it's from a bad low-budget movie or a bad YouTube skit. And also in the ring, she seems pretty awkward when you're watching her. And also, you've got Naomi and Natalya, who both don't have the best win-loss record. Whenever they're in big matches, they tend to lose. But then, on the other side, you've got Becky Lynch, who's a really big fan favorite. So, she, to me, she's the best of the SmackDown's women division. 
And then you've got the two NXT Divas, Carmella and Alexa Bliss. And while both of those are really liked by the NXT fans, they haven't even had their first match on the main roster yet, so they're not established on the main roster. We have to wait and see how they use them and all that, and it might take a while uh, for them to actually get, you know, women's title shots or actually be put in important matches when it comes to the women's division. So, women's division on SmackDown um, just isn't as strong as the Raw one just yet in my mind. And actually, only one of the women on the roster has been Divas Champion. And that was Natalia. That's been a really, really long time. And comparing Natalia now to Natalia when she was champion, it's, it's, it's a big difference as far as uh, booking goes. So, I think I covered pretty much everything. And yeah, going back to the Battle Royal, I really like that for the simple fact that Kane dominated that match. That was one of the highlights for me of the show. Uh, promo wise, segment wise, I really, really enjoyed the Heath Slater segment, him coming in and complaining that he hasn't been drafted. And I'm actually hoping that he goes to SmackDown. So, that is pretty much it. Overall, I'd give the show a 6.5 to 7 on 10. Not a bad show, it was a good show, and it definitely has the tools to improve with American Alpha debuting next week, and also Shelton Benjamin coming soon to SmackDown. Looking forward to that. But compared to Raw, Raw beats SmackDown by far this week. So, that's it in the comment section. Let me know what you thought was the best show this week. Was it Raw or was it SmackDown? And if you want to see weekly SmackDown Live, or I'll just call it SmackDown, SmackDown Reviews, click that like button down below. I haven't done a review for a normal show, something that's not a pay-per-view in a very, very long time. So yeah, if you want to see more, click that like button. I'm out. See ya.